Soft sub sauce. Okay, it looks like we're recording. So I'm gonna be doing a let's read a problem clue. I'm actually gonna go turn down music. I just wanna have a little bit of music in the background so it's not just our sound and yes, it's home stuff music. Uh <laughs> mainly because there's no problem with music. Okay. So, we're starting with Problem Sleuth. I'm actually going to be doing the Let's Read of all of Homestuck. Uh, Homestuck Squared. The Epilogue. Hive Swap. Pest Request. And Friend Sim. I want to kill myself. Figured I would start with Problem Sleuth first because this ties into Homestuck. So, yeah. You are one of the top problem sleuths in the city. Solicitations for your services, our service, are numerous in quantity. Compensation adequate. It is a balmy summer evening. You are feeling particularly hard boiled tonight. What will you do? retrieve arms from safe. You already got arms, numb nuts. Retrieve your gun. There are dames to be rescued. You are quite positive there has never been a gun in your office and never will be. Frankly, the notion strikes you as reckless and foolhardy. Break through glass with fists to unlock door. You don't know why you are assuming the door will be locked. You don't usually keep the door to your office locked. Nonetheless, a guy this hard-boiled doesn't go messing around with totally unmanly things like knobs. You send your meaty fist glass word. Thud. <laughs> it seems there never was a glass element to the door. It was just a piece of paper taped to it. Take the piece of paper. The piece of paper was added to your inventory. Manhandle the doorknob. There are dames to be rescued. The door is locked. Funny, you don't remember locking it. Call the royal locksmith. The most pain plainly obvious course of action is to call a locksmith. You examine the phone. While it appears to be hooked up to an active phone line, the rotor hooks rotary dial and receiver cord are both miss missing. You won't be talking to anyone on this phone. Check pockets and desk drawers for phone parts. Unfortunately, your desk has no, no drawers since it is a board resting on some cinder blocks with box wood panel siding. Your pocket, however, yields bountiful returns, you find some candy corn. Get key, you pick up the gun. The grip is pulled against your palm. This is your only friend in the world right now. It's gonna be a long night. Next. Store candy corn in safe. Thinking the precious cargo may not be secure in your pocket, you explore alternatives. But you don't know the combination to the safe. You figure it's probably hidden somewhere in your office. Check the other side of the paper. You decide to examine piece of paper. Next, 42366. Eureka! You discovered a sequence of numerals. Open safe. You will use sequence of numerals on the safe. The safe doesn't seem to work. It appears to be a replica of a safe's facade, concealing something beneath it on the wall. There's a painting of a clown under the safe cover. Look under the foxwood paneling of the desk. There is a flask of whiskey under the desk. Get ye flask. You pick up the flask of whiskey. Drink the whiskey and rem remember the good old days. How do you expect to drink from the flask of whiskey when it is not in your jacket pocket? 
Exchange gun for whiskey, then drink. You swap the key for the flask of whiskey and wield it accordingly. Wop. Ow. Ow. You topple backwards onto your desk. Use the key on the door and open it. You re-equip your gun, so you can blow a hole in the lock and open the door. It looks like your gun only has one bullet left. Are you sure you want to use it in this way? You might need it in case you have to off yourself later. Check what is taped to the bottom of the phone. As you stoop to look at the bottom of the phone, your finger slips and you blow the lock off the door. Never mind what's under the phone. Bus R Us, a good way to get ahead. 5318 Boop. <laughs> it is a business card for Bus R Us. Probably a brothel considering the lame, double, and trodden slogan and the phone number, which if turned upside down spells boobies. It does. Card. You put the bus or us card in your inventory. You also put the phone upright and back on its hook to make sure you don't miss any important calls from the would-be clients. Walk out of the room through the now unlocked door. The door still will not open. It appears that it was never locked in the first place. Something must be obstructing its path. Look through the newly made hole in the door. <laughs> oh my dead. No wonder the door won't open. Blocking it is an enormous and magnificent bust of Ben Stiller in his role as Starks Starsky in the 2004 Retromania comedy remake of Starsky and Hutch. Lying on the floor appears to be an unfortunate bystander, an employee of Bust R Us. He was polishing the bust right in front of your door for some reason. Take the bus sunglasses. You can't reach them. In any case, they are probably just a part of the statue and not actual sunglasses. You spend the next half hour trying to reach them. That is creepy. Take a closer look at the mysterious clown picture. The painting is exquisite. There is something funny about his eyes, though. Light seems to be shining through from the other side. Look through the eyes of the clown. It's too bright in this room to see anything in there. You do think you hear a voice, though. You can't tell what it is saying. Throw a cinder block at the door. You're just so angry about not being able to reach the sunglasses, you're about to lose it. You first consolidate all the scrapped wood into a neat pile, then hoist the block towards the door. It sounds like something was knocked loose on the other side. Peer out the window to see what floor you are on. You face east in the room to look out the window. Bright daylight floods the room through the glass. You've always been a stickler for natural light. This is the only source of light in the room. What makes this particularly strange is the fact that it is 10 o'clock in the evening. Take a look outside. It's the view from your third floor office. You gaze abstracted, abstractedly at the commotion below. Same scene, same faces every day. It looks like it hardly ever changes. Not that you could afford to pay much attention to scenery with your mind wrapped around the latest problem to sleuth and your lips around your flask. You are a drunk. Ask the movers with the moving van to remove Startsky's statue. You shout toward the moving truck, hoping someone might be willing to bust your problem, so to speak. You do your best pantomime of Ben Stiller as the Startsky statue, but it doesn't seem like anyone can see or hear you. 
Throw cinder block at window, thereby discovering it is fake. Crash! You think you have a pretty good idea about your off how your office works by now. Acting upon this hunch, you hoist another cinder block. Last word. Pick up shard of glass and put it in your inventory. No clue is too trivial for the keen problem solution. Your model is let no inventory go uncluttered. What's that? You catch a glimpse of the reflection in the glass. It's the wall behind you. Turn around. Now facing south, you pause to marvel at the beauty of your office, the wall mural celebrating ethnic diversity. You had it commissioned some time ago by a promising young artist. Best 11000 you've ever spent. I wish I had that kind of money. Read the note under the coffee. Madam Mural, bring wall, bring wall your fantasies to life. One nine hundred strip it, strip first. I was gonna say stripper. It appears to be another business card. At a glance, one might think it was a calling card for a lady of the night named Muriel with a typo in her name given the poor spelling exhibited elsewhere. But on closer inspection, it is more likely a misspelling of for Mural. That's terrifying. Given the smudged out pun about walls, the suggestion in the phone number is probably regarding the old coat of paint rather than anyone's clothes. It's an easy enough, uh, it's an easy enough mistake to make, though. You feel sorry for anyone who, at any point in the past, may have called while well, under the wrong impression. Jasper, your angry meows are terrifying. Okay, I'm sorry, I need to change that, because that's terrifying. <laughs> Using the chair, cinder blocks, and paneling, make a four. You stash the metal mural card in your inventory and set about making a really cool fort in your office. It is complete with a front step and a chimney. You are really proud of your craftsmanship. Use your imagination to play make-believe. Inside your fort, you are only bound by the walls of your imagination and several small pieces of particle board. Fantasize! This is what being a hard-boiled problem sleuth is all about. It's about being a strong, silent type oozing with confidence, charisma, and other fine qualities uh, such as not being trapped in your own office. It's about having a working phone, a real desk, not one but two steak dinners, and some hysterical broad on the line yakking about some fellow she got troubles with. It's always the same thing with dames. You covered yourself in your sublime fantasy by now and then and then saying things into the phone such as now calm down a second toots and hey take it easy sweetheart I can barely understand a word you're saying. Ring ring your call is rudely interrupted by a ringing noise. It can't be the phone because you're already on it. Ring, ring. Something is ringing in your office. It's probably a tumor. Check it out. Answer the phone in a very hard-boiled way. You pick up the phone and mutter some impatient greetings into the useless receiver. There is no response. Looks like you just lost another client to technical difficulties. Throw the devil phone out the window. You are fed up with your shitty phone. It has screwed you out of a case for the last time. Go look. You're probably probably going to need to get that back somehow. Crack open window. Even though the window is broken, you decide to open it. You slide the lower pane upward, but the whole window frame seems to slip 
from its anchored position. Next, the window comes off the wall altogether. On closer examination, it seems to be a false window with a picture inside it. The picture is lived from within, sort of like a sophisticated light box. Put window down. The window slash light box is plugged into the wall behind it. The false window was concealing a large safe. Place false window in inventory. The false window is way too big to carry around, stupid. But you did find a curtain rod just under the top edge. You never did get around to putting up drapes. Then again, it never did make much sense to cover up the only source of light in your office. You put the curtain rod in your inventory. Use numbers from sheet of paper to open the safe. You examine the heavy duty safe. You must be keeping some serious loot in here. Enter the combination 412366. Swing! You enter the suit. The sequence of numerals from the piece of paper. The combination works. However, instead of opening the safe, the dial has simply popped open to reveal a key hole. It looks like it requires a key that looks more like a house key or a car key rather than one of those old-fashioned looking keys which tend to be littered all over video games and which you are quite sure you have never seen lying around in your office. You don't need this pa piece of paper anymore. Crumple it up and throw it away. You discard the piece of paper. Shoot safe. Your key is out of bullets. Get cinder block and phone receiver out of false window. It's a long way down. You'll have to think of a way to reel them in if you want them back. Unplug the window to conserve electricity. You unplug the false window, which is probably burning through electricity with its powerful fluorescent bulbs and strange spatial warping properties. You're not made of money. The room goes dark. Look through the eyes of the clown. With the room darkened, you should be able to see through the painting. Next! Godzooks, it's another urban mural. This one is particularly unpleasant. You have a feeling it might have been placed there just to annoy you. You hear a voice from the other side. It's hard to tell what it is saying, but you think you can make out the words toots and sweetheart. Now and then, it's hard to tell how far away the mural is. The clown's eyes are so close together, you can only see through one at a time, limiting your death perception. You wonder what kind of freak this painting was made for. If only you had some sort of thin, extendable implement to poke through the hole to tell how far away it is. Push the curtain rod through one of the clown's eye holes. You feel the curtain rod bump into something not too far in something not too far into the wall. <laughs> Get a look at the unobstructed view. Starsky, Huggy, Hutch. It is the adjacent office. The man at the desk is talking to a client about some sort of problem which requires sleuthing. Next, it is your loathsome arch nemesis, Ace Dick. <laughs> he is always scooping you on the best cases. That portly son of a bitch makes your blood boil. Shout insults at Ace Dick through the clown painting. You shout, but he cannot hear you. The walls may be too thick or he is just engrossed in his conversation. It sounds like he is arguing over a misunderstanding about the nature of the services provided by Bus R Us and an alarmingly large bill for those services. In the darkness, you stub your toe on the false estate cover. You utter more profanity. Plug the damn 
damn window back in. Inflated electric bills are new or not, you are getting sick of stubbing your toe on things. Drop kick the door. The door bears the brunt of the bottled up shitstorm brewing within. Examine aftermath of shitstorm. The key which you cannot actually see and don't actually know is there jingled a bit, you have to throw something heavier against the door if you want to knock it loose. 